Yeah, you know, it's it's been a very interesting uh, season. I don't think either side expected maybe to be in the position they have been in, but there's been some great soccer um, played on both sides. So I think with how even the matchup is on paper, it should be a really exciting one. Super excited as we are started off. Emily Matthews, a little touch inside, but stolen by, stolen by Alyssa Porch. Kelsey Carrico, good defense, forcing the ball out of bounds. You know, it's going to be interesting to kind of see, especially how the Boilermakers begin this game. The last few uh, few matches and the, the kind of trend throughout the season, as I think we spoke about for the Illinois game, Brendan, is they like to play from the back to start with, and there hasn't been a whole lot of success in that happening. So I think what I would like to see the Boilermakers do is, is more long balls. And the same for Maryland. You know, they've struggled a little bit at the back. Um, and I think, again, going for those long balls, trying to get it outside their half quickly is how they're going to try and find some success. Absolutely is. Olivia Hall looking to throw it in, throws it into Dunaway. In the midfield, Dunafield breaking through, but call, foul is called on Maryland. I think one thing we talk about in the build-up is Purdue conceded 17 corners against Minnesota, which is just you know a number that if you want to work on something from uh, last game to this, it would be that. Getting out your half set pieces are so critical, especially when you're struggling to score, and having them that much against you is just the worst thing. So Purdue are going to need to... Uh, I guess really focus on trying to uh, keep the pressure high as they attack down this left-hand side. Absolutely, and Budish making the run. She's got Boudreaux on the opposite side of the field if she can see her, but look at that speed exploding pass. Will she get a shot? No, she slides out of bounds into the wall. Hopefully she's okay, but Maryland will maintain possession. It's just the start you want, though. You want Budish, who was an absolute workhorse for this Boilermaker team, to take it on her own. You want you know, the same for Holder to do the same. Take it on your own, go. Because what that does is, as a defender, when you see your strikers, your midfielders taking it, winning one-on-ones, you get more encouraged. And that whole momentum shift, it's so critical when it comes to winning a game. You said workhorse. Budish, like, workhorse is an, a, such a fantastic word to describe Kayla Budish. She is a beast out there. She does everything. She's so tough, as you saw, sliding into the wall, getting right back up. Such a young, talented player as Gabby Holler finds her on that left side. Budish working to break down her defender. Turns around. Looking, reading the field. Finds Sydney Duarte. Duarte rotating towards her right. Looking for Budish again, but stolen. An interesting stat when it comes to looking at Maryland, 16 goals in both the first half and the second half. And I excuse the win there if you hear that, but first half and second half, exactly the same goals, very even. When you look at the Boilermakers, a lot more goals coming in the first half. Um, you know, so it's important to the Boilermakers get a good start, but they need to kind of, you know, work and, and keep that work rate up for 90 minutes, which is where they have struggled. They have struggled a little bit in that area. The throw in, thrown over to Catherine DeRosa. And now making the run inside and grabbed by the goalkeeper, Kaylee Kimball, the freshman out of Danville, California. And she hands it off to Matthews. Matthews finds Dunaway. Boudreau down the right sideline, chooses to go the opposite direction. Dunaway passes back to Carrico, Kelsey Carrico. Seeing a lot of action here, but Maryland trying to make a run. Peyton Hunt finds Budish, and Purdue's on the run. Nice move, nice Purdue. move. Great move by Budish. Budish charging down that left side, down that left sideline. Comes back to Sydney Duarte to find Emily Matthews. Matthews taking a slightly, uh, slightly more midfield uh, central role than what we've seen. We've seen her at the top of the uh, formation quite a bit. On the other side, Maryland look like they're going to take their 4 4 2 once again. So, you know, a very solid attacking and defensive formation. There's a shot by Boudreau, but knocked away, deflected by Malike Days. 
the sixth year grad student playing all six years with the program cross inside but Sabrina Blunt grabs her head as it is a turnover. Yeah, the, the, for the Boilermakers to win this game, they're going to have to get more numbers in the box. I think they haven't done a whole lot. Even when they've been down, you know, we've not really seen formations that have allowed midfielders and forwards to really get, uh, get ahead. So that's going to be very critical for them if it comes to scoring goals. High paced start so far though, Brendan. Extremely high paced start. Both teams going back and forth, and Maryland choosing to reset, passing it back to Krista Waterman. And now swinging it over to the right side, far sideline, top of our screen. Malike Days, a little bit of a long ball. Long ball up to Ava Morales. She's got Carrico on the defense. Finds Catherine DeRosa back inside. That's Alyssa Porch. There's the shot in Kaylee Kimball. Oh, oh my goodness, no. bounces off her hands. And that is a Maryland goal. Oh, that is the worst possible start. It was right at her, unfortunately. Just, I honestly think she thought it was gonna go further to the right there. She's dived, dived too far. It's kind of hit her legs. I, yeah, 100% thought that was, it was gonna curl more. What a shot there, straight down the middle. And Maryland take an early lead in this one. Holy cow, Maryland up 1-0. Purdue Boilermakers giving up another early goal. Wow, we saw something similar to this when Purdue took on Illinois. Let up a 12-second goal. Obviously, this a little bit more into the game, but that's a mistake you cannot make as a goalkeeper. Ball hits your hands and just gets right past you. Well, Maryland's I, up 1-0. I think, you know, as, as Maryland win the foul here, I think the worst thing about conceding an early goal, you know, the Illinois one we saw two games ago, it was an unbelievable shot. It hit the top, you know, right bin and it was questionable whether that was savable. You know, obviously that one was, and that makes it just that much worse. And, um, you know, unlucky because Purdue were looking good there to start. Purdue has looked good, but now they've got a hole they got to dig themselves out of. Brooke Weston passes it over back to uh, Malike Days. Oh, do Olivia Hicks. Finds Michaela Days, Malike's sister. And the Boy. ball goes out, so it'll be a corner kick for Maryland. Well, the Mikey just need to take a breath. It just reset themselves. Got to take a breath. Got to reset set yourselves, especially because right here is where Purdue let up two goals against Michigan, or not Michigan, excuse me, Minnesota. Wrong team with the M. Let up two goals on corner kicks on Thursday. You got to mark up here. Got to make sure you do not let players get free. Kaylee Kimball, hands up top. Here comes the kick. I mean, even that one was a little bit awkward, the way it was dealt with. You know, it's a foul. Um, I think Maryland slightly obstructed the goalie there, but it's still a little bit awkward. And, and uh, I, yeah, it, it just some some like concerning signs so far from uh, Purdue at the back. A little bit awkward, a little bit dangerous. Purdue actually out corner kicked 14 to 1. Sydney Boudreau at the bottom of her screen raising her hand. Holler cannot find her. Instead, find Duarte, but. Foul is called. Looks like it was an offsides by Duarte. Unlucky there, a lot of space down that right hand side. They were calling for it. Holland just not able to find Boudre down that uh, right hand side. I mean, Wagner passes over to Amanda Schaefer, the right outside back for Maryland. The through ball sent, oh my goodness, look at that acceleration. But not fast enough. Peyton Hunt, good defense for the Boilermakers. Yeah, I think Hunt there for a slight second might have thought that uh, she'd let that one uh, maybe go too easily, but well recovered. I think one of the pluses that the Boilermakers can take being in this position is they've been in this position. You know, they've gone down early before, as we've said, and they've, they've been down early quite a few times and, and they spent a lot of games, you know, behind and, and have found ways to come back. So I wouldn't be too concerned if I was a Boilermaker fan. Not at all, but Boudreaux finally getting a touch. She's been open on this sideline all game long, but quickly gives it up. Emily Matthews making the run. There's a nice pass, but oh, just a little bit outside. And Boudreaux tries to track it down, and she does. 
Boudreaux has it, cross inside, but nobody is there. Ball picked up by Emily Wagner. Emery Wagner, excuse me. Yeah, I mean, look, all right, the, the cross wasn't the greatest, but at the end of the day, you know, it is a numbers game. And, you know, the more crosses you get in, the more shots you take, there's more chance of things happening. And it's just uh, a good note to self that you're able to get down into that half and you're able to, um, you know, get some attacking balls into the box. And the pass, or the throw in. Budish gets it, finds Boudreau. Boudreau through ball to holler. Malike Days finds it, gives it to Porch. Over to DeRosa, back up to Alina Stahl. Maryland's leading goalkeeper, or not goalkeeper, goal scorer. But a fight through the midfield results in Emily Matthews finding it. Through ball sent way too hard, and Wagner's there, Wagner's there again. <laughs> That's something we've seen that these last three attacks from the Boilermakers, they've all got, I mean, you know, into that third quarter and they've looked good or that last third and then they're trying to force it too much. You're 10 minutes into the game, you know, hold that ball up in the midfield. You know you can get down there. You've shown it. There's a lot of space down this right-hand side that we've mentioned already. So I think the midfield for Purdue just need to hold it up. But Maryland looking very, very solid right now. It might be... Uh Cause of Purdue just trying to force the action, feeling the pressure after already letting up another early goal. Obviously wanting to be aggressive, get back in the game, tie it up. But as you're saying, to kind of play off of it, you gotta still play smart. You gotta play intelligent soccer. Not yeah. don't have to force it too much. No, hundred percent. No, you don't. Especially not, you know, what was it, three through balls down the middle that have, you know, hit way too hard. Just take it, you know. Just take a second and relax and um, you know, let the midfield do what they're supposed to and hold that ball up. And so Peyton Hunt comes back near side, Sabrina Blunt. Long ball inside to Holler over her head, but Holler, oh, tripped up. Holler's tripped up, Budish tries to get it, knocked out of bounds by Krista Waterman. Dangerous play, but it looks like Gabby Holler is down. Yeah, that was a tough one. I mean, I think the way it almost looked, it, it kind of almost looked to me as if it, it was a penalty. I mean, three players coming in and taking down an attacker. I, 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 I know refs that would have given that as a foul as we see some sort of replays coming up on your scene, and it's never a good scene to see a player still down after that. But at least she's sitting up, and uh, hopefully it's just a, uh, a bit of a stinger or a knock. I think she's about to get up, which is a good sign. Yeah, there she is, standing up on her own power. Looks like she's grabbing her knee, possibly, but Gabby Holler, such a tough player for Purdue. Yeah, 100% she is. I think she, she is struggling. What, I'm amazed most out of that that the ref really didn't even look at it at all. We didn't even give it a second, uh, second chance. I know the ball was kind of coming out, but as we look at it, I, I personally think that might have been a penalty. It looked like it possibly could have been. Well, she got. She, she went down from behind, which is why. I, I think it's less the goalie coming in and more getting tackled uh, from behind. But it is good to see her walking off on her own power here. Anyways, it looks like Gabby Holler walking over to the sideline. Well, either way, the Boilermakers are in a good attacking position here. First kind of set piece situation. Yeah. Deep in uh, the Maryland half. And it'll actually be Megan Hutchinson coming in for the Boilermakers in place of Gabby Holler. She gets a round of applause from the crowd. Her toughness, this being probably her last day in a Boilermaker uniform at Folk Field. But Megan Hutchinson coming in to replace her. Played in seven games this season with not too much action, only nine minutes per game. Instantly finds the first touch. Cross inside, headed by Dunaway, but kicked out. Good pressure here by the Boilermakers. They need to keep it up. Really good pressure. Boudreau, nope. Olivia Hicks said, no, no, get that out of here. Emily Matthews trying to reset. Through ball up to Hutchinson, just can't get it. Good defense by Michaela De uh, Malike Days. That's that situation I was talking about. And look, it's worked out well. There's another, you know, obviously throwing down deep in the half as it comes in. 
But Matthews had the choice there, taking it back to a defender's resetting, going down that left-hand side. They just need to make a few more sort of you know, mature moves and more patient moves if they're going to try and score. Because the Maryland back four, when the ball comes in, are looking a little bit disorganized. I think uh, mainly because they haven't really had anything to do with the, last, the first 15 minutes or so of this game. But, um, you know, there's definitely positive signs there. It's really interesting because Maryland, like, on a bigger picture scale, not just the back line, Maryland's a very, like, they're an old team. In fact, they have seven grad students on this team. Yes, seven grad students, and of those seven grad students, there are also 11 transfers. So it's a very old team, but it's also a very, it, it, not necessarily inexperienced, but they're not experienced playing with each other. So while they're old or older, they got a way more experience, they don't have that time playing with each other. There's The chemistry is has just not been there this season. Well, I think it's tough, you know, when you do lose, you know, that amount of games and, you know, you get so few wins. And it's the same to be said for the Boilermakers. You're going to see so many formation changes, so many roster changes, and it's... Um, you know, it, it does beg the question sometimes, do you just take three games where, all right, you might not win, but at least you get some consistency to build as uh, the Boilermakers try and take it down this right-hand side. Strong play by Michaela Days. Through ball, just tapped by Peyton Hunt. Otherwise, it looked like Alina Stahl was going to have a great run. Dunaway steals it, looking for a player. Ball gets back to Emily Matthews. Emily Matthews to Dunaway. Looking for a through ball. Nope, chooses instead to send a long ball to Boudreau. Boudreau trying to track it down, but nope, Olivia Hicks is there. Nice play there, Boudreau. I think they won the corner, I believe, or no, they're going to give it to Maryland. Maryland has the ball, so. Good attempt there, good idea. I like that play down the sideline to Boudreau, but Olivia Hicks, great defense by her. And Olivia Hicks is also another experienced player on this team, the senior from Uxbridge, Maryland. Has she started three of uh, 14 games she's played in this season? But ball. And an academic all Big Ten. Yes, academic all Big Ten. You know, I, I don't understand how athletes are able to balance, like, schoolwork and their sport. Because I'd imagine if I was an athlete, I would put so much thought and effort into, like, my sport. Like, where do they even find time to do schoolwork? I think y y you make a good point. I don't think people will realize, I think all three divisions of, of collegiate sports, um, how much time and effort does go into, um, you know, go into you know, these athletes' lives. And, uh, you know, it's great, especially, um, I think both these teams have an amazing sports system, an academic system, and you see it with how many academic, all Big Ten and, and all Americans that you, you see. Uh, but it is an amazing, unbelievable commitment and uh, something that's very often overlooked. Awkward kick there by Kaylee Kimball. Maybe the wind took it. The wind blowing into the... Kaylee Kimball's goal. I don't know goal, if that was the wind, I'll that, be honest. But that looked like she just kind of whiffed it. I don't think the wind helped. Wind didn't help, but very awkward kick, and Maryland's got another corner. So you got to mark up. Alina Stahl inside. Which Boilermaker is going to get her? Kimball's got her hands up. And Catherine DeRosa about to send it in. Yeah, Boilermakers uh, are playing into the wind, though. You know, so they'll have that on their backs in the second half. See if that makes any uh, any play. DeRosa sends it in. Too far, and Purdue gets the ball. So far, it's been a pretty even uh, even start. Just that one mistake is what's led to Maryland having the ball. They've looked dangerous, and they've had a lot of opportunities to look even more dangerous, I think, than they... Uh, than they might have uh, allowed themselves to do. I think we might see uh, a few more attacks on the break here from Maryland, especially if they can get it to some of those players that are uh, are in space on the cross field when they do break. Mm -hmm. I 100% agree. Matthews finds Dunaway. Dunaway switching sides, going to her left, going against Porch. 
Schwartz trips up, but it's still going to be Purdue ball. It is amazing how hot it is. It's just standing here and feeling it and feeling the uh, the breeze. It's just absolutely beautiful. I hope it doesn't mean that winter will stay longer and we'll see snow in April again. But uh, what an amazing day to finish this Big Ten uh, regular season action. As it looks like we have some subs coming up uh, and getting in the standby position for both teams here. Absolutely. But on the field currently, Purdue trying to win the battle in the midfield. Duarte goes down, foul on Porch. Porch looking at the ref, sh shaking her hands. She's clearly a bit frustrated with that call, confused. Didn't think she fouled Duarte. But the break goes Purdue's way, and Emily Matthews looking to find an open player. She has Carrico at the top, but uh, yep, there she goes right to Carrico. Erico sends it inside. Hutchinson falls down, but gets back up, finds it. But Maryland's able to fend it off. Good passing in the defense right there, but Boudreau deflects it off of Hicks. Yeah, and that's something we haven't seen the Boilermakers do too often is bring on some early substitutions. Split it off coming on Holleran and Woodbeck as well, and on the Maryland side. Mia Isaac will come in and take a uh, midfield role. Mia Isaac, the junior from Huntingtown, Maryland. She's started eight, eight of 16 games this season, and she's averaged 80 minutes per game. Uh, any 80 minutes per game. Yeah, the Boilermaker has been pretty stubborn when it comes to subs more so in the second half you've seen a lot of the same line out there uh, in terms of attacking um, I guess I should say 11 out there um, but you know it's, it's good to see some early subs good to see the proactive and really do want to win this game and not just let it go even though it's the last game of the season Woodbeck long ball oh just a little bit higher and she would have had Budish but Budish still finds it and the offsides call. Tough call there. I thought Dunaway had done enough to come back on the side. It was close, but um, it, it looked pretty close. But I guess uh, ref's not going to give it to her. No, not at all. Emory Wagner looking to kick it away. She's one of the transfers and grad students on this team. Played at Georgia last year, but this season she started five of the five games she's played in as Hunt safely knocks it back to Kimball as she was getting a lot of pressure from Alyssa, uh, from Porch. It was a nice job there by Holleran to control it. And now set up the attack down that left-hand side. Yep, got a counter. And starts with Woodbeck. Woodbeck under the foot. Duarte, great move. Duarte now down the left sideline looking for an open Boilermaker. Comes back to Woodbeck. She's got Emily Matthews to her right. Nice play by the sub so far, coming in and bringing a bit of energy. These Purdue subs know to come in, and like a lot of these players on Purdue's team, they understand their roles. They know their job is to come off the bench and bring a spark of energy for the team. And that's one of the things I love about this Boilermaker team. As Lauren Holleran long ball, ball into ball. Hutchinson. What, what a diving snag that is by Emery. Wegner. What a great ball there by Holleran and well uh, well taken. Yeah, Wagner, great speed to come in there and, uh, and secure that. Would that header over to Dunaway. Dunaway finds Matthews and Purdue. Doing a good job here connecting on passes. These are nice, easy passes, of course. Nothing too crazy, nothing going too much into dangerous areas. But right there, just lose possession again, and Maryland now on the attack. But it's going to go out of bounds, and Purdue gets the possession. 
Interesting, we've seen the play switch there. There was a lot of right-hand side attacking early in this game. Now it's moved out to that far side on your screen. And the Boilermakers attack once again. They're asking more questions than Maryland at this current moment. Are they going to be able to get an answer? If Hutchinson had turned her head around, she would have gotten that ball over to her, but instead, obviously that didn't happen. Amanda Schaefer versus Naomi Splitorf. Splitorf, such a quick, she's another one of these young freshmen on this team. But Woodbeck comes away with the ball. Head coach Drew off yelling at Woodbeck to find Kayla Budish at the bottom of our screen, hollering, deflected off of Ava Morales. And just booted away. But there is Alyssa Porch making the run. That was a great ball there. Really great ball. And, uh, you know, it just shows the counter attacking ability I was talking about earlier with Maryland. Um, you know, it's the, the speed is what's so dangerous about this team. The Boilermakers just uh, need to be careful. Now they're asking, you know, you know, more of those questions and trying to attack more, just not to get too down the field and too weak at the back. Oh, Hutchinson shoots and misses wide left. Nearly a fluky bit of play there for the Boilermakers. It doesn't quite work out as we have some more substitutions coming in. Hallie. Venus coming in. Yeah. Hallie Johnson and Sophie Venus coming in. Sophie Venus, one of those other transfers. The senior from Oregon, or played at Oregon, but is from Calabasas, California. One goal, two assists on the season, but has played in all 16 games. Yeah, and Hunt coming off of the Boilermakers and Kevin Azir will take uh, a defensive role. And Emily Matthews. Long ball ahead to Budish. Can she get there in time? She oh, does! Go. Budish what a got bit the of goal! Magic. Budish has the goal, and Purdue ties it up. Sensational one, one. through ball, they've been doing it the last 10 minutes. He finally had one pay off, a great finish by Budish to chip it over there. And we have a hell of a game now on our hands. Purdue ties it up, 1-1. One, one. What a score by Budish. You see the speed as she attacks Emily Wagner. Ball Bud deflects, Wagner just wasn't able to pick it up and Budish right there, open goal, no one in front of her. All you gotta do, tap it in, and just like that, Purdue ties it up. Well, we, we've spoken a few times this season about her deceptive speed and that last burst that she's able to uh, to get, and what a nice goal that is. The substitution's playing a huge part, so a great call there by the Purdue coaching staff to bring them in. 100% agree, that was Kayla Budish's fourth goal on the season. Such a fantastic goal scorer. The freshman, such a creative. She's her future is so promising, and to just demonstrate how good of a goal scorer she is, let's go back a little bit into high school, where Kayla Budish was the two-time conference leading scorer. Kayla Budish just has a knack for finding the goal and getting that ball to the back of the net. I tell you, what amazes me though with that goal is, although this game really is just about pride and getting ready for next season, it doesn't feel like that. You know, the crowd, it just feels like there's so much more at stake and that's just what's great about the Big Ten. You know, there's such fierce rivalries that even when, you know, it's all said and done, it's the last game of the season, there's so much fight in all the teams and uh, yeah, it's great to see and, and nice to see the Boilermakers get back into this so we have a game on our hands. A really good game on our hands. Now Maryland yeah. looking uh, the frustrated team as they uh, look to try and get something going here. Looking a little bit shaky. And the runs made here by Krista Waterman. Back out to Mia Isaac. It looks right now there's a little bit of a disconnect between the defenders and the forwards. Maryland st struggled the last few minutes to, to get it through the midfield and up to their attacking uh, Attacking wings and striker. Uh, Maryland trying to get it up, but stolen by Duarte. Purdue on another one. Duarte streaking through the middle of the field. Trips and falls down. Malike Days, good defense. Great tackle. Great tackle as Holleran gets this great. one back. Holleran over to Budis. She just scored. But another great defensive play by Taraya Turnage. 
Yeah, Dunway totally open there and uh, through ball might have led to another goal of Holleran chosen to go on the left hand side. As the Boilermakers bring in another substitution. It is Vicky, uh, Victoria Kevazia. So I guess Kevazia didn't actually come on. She stood up before for the substitution, but I guess they, uh, they decided to wait until this one to bring her on, so. Decided to wait to bring her on, but they bring her on right now, playing as a forward. Let's see if she can find an opportunity to score as Malike Days kicks it out of bounds. Hollard, Duarte. Duarte, cross inside. Somehow finds Woodbeck. Woodbeck, the shot caught by Emery Wagner. Nice testing shot, though. I think that's a good, a nice play. You've got momentum on your side. Why not take a crack at it and see what happens? And Wagner sends the long ball off of Woodbeck's head. Maryland ball. Maryland just need to get their forwards to come back slightly, I think, if... Both Venus and uh, maybe Portugal well just came back slightly to support their midfielders. They'd be able to get some uh, get some more success attacking. That's what they were able to do early in this game and what caused Purdue a lot of problems. But right now, I think they're playing just a little bit too deep and uh, they're being um, it, it, Maryland is struggling to uh, to locate them. Sabrina Blunt, the long ball to Maryland, but look at the speed of Splitorf to uh, touch it over to Budish. Budish working to break down Krista Waterman. Strong tackle by Waterman. And Ava Morales finds Alyssa Porch. Porch stolen by Dunaway. Dunaway trying to turn the corner. Two defenders on her, knocked away, and it's going to be a Purdue corner. So one thing I will say, the ref is happy to let them go at it. Today has been a physical, confrontational game so far. I thought there might have been a foul in the corner. I thought there was going to be another foul here. But the rest happy to let them uh, let them go and uh, go at it. Wagner with three sa uh, with uh, one save so far off of three Purdue shots. It's going to be Kevizia sends it in, headed out. Yeah, another play going down there in the box, right outside of the ref. Happy to let it go. I think, it's good I, mean, I think it's good refereeing, though. You, you either choose what you're going to do. You either play physical or you or you call more things. So it's good to be consistent. Alyssa Porch making the run. She has Halloran in front of her. Going to her left. Open shot, and she misses wide right. Alyssa Porch had a great opportunity, but an inaccurate shot. And Purdue can take a sigh of relief. Maryland players just struggling here at the back. I believe it's, uh, it's Waterman. Krista Waterman. Yeah. I didn't see if she went down. Yeah, Krista Waterman looks to be walking off the field, looks to be injured, possibly grabbing her right hip. Yeah, she's coming off. I believe Jackson's going to be coming on. Waterman coming off. Yes, Jackson coming on. Zora Jackson, the junior from Durham, North Carolina. Another academic all Big Ten on this Maryland squad. But Vicky Keviz Victoria Kevizia, ball's deflected. Over and it is a shot. Oh. And it is in. It's another goal and it's Ava Morales. What a shot. I mean, it was pretty telegraphed what she was going to do, but what a shot that was. Took a slight deflection there. Unfortunately for the Boilermakers, but Maryland able to answer quickly and to be honest, slightly against the grain. Um, so great job there. Ava Morales, great job breaking down. I think it was hollering and then sending the shot to the bottom right hand side. Kaylee Kimball still looking for her first save of the game, but has already let up two goals. Yeah, no, I don't think that was, I think it was actually. Uh, Zoe Allen now subbed in for the Boilermakers. I say I was gonna say I think it was Blau that uh, the deflection actually came off of. It's unfortunate for the Boilermakers. 
Allen coming in to try and uh, get some more attacking presence here. Of all the freshmen, Sabrina Blunt has been one of the most consistent starters in uh, the Purdue back line, starting 15 of the 15 games this season, playing 90 minutes in every game she's started. Head coach Drew Roth says that she, Sabrina Blunt has a very physical presence and wins individual battles in air or on the ground, but did not win that one. Well, I think, you know, if you're Maryland at this point, take a few more shots. Every time you get down there, you might as well take a shot because, you know, the Boilermakers are looking shaky at the back. So you don't really have anything to, to lose. Extremely shaky, and Purdue is not on top of looking sh uh, a bit shaky. They've put in a more, they keep subbing in and out players in their back line. Their current back line is up top. Chloe Woodbeck will come down our screen. Chloe Woodbeck, Nicole Kevizia, Sabrina Blunt, and Lauren Holleran. But Porch looking to make a run on the attack, slows down, turns around and finds her teammate, it's Hallie Johnson. Hallie Johnson stolen by Woodbeck, and Woodbeck now on the attack. Through ball over to Splittorf. Splittorf takes the shot, and it is oh. just outside. Just outside. Oh, man, that one was close as well. Great sign there for the Boilermakers. Maryland had a lot of players back as well, so to be able to get that through ball in, really positive sign. Just wow. missing there. I thought that was going in. It was it was a slow looking shot too. It was a different type of pace on that ball. It wasn't a strike. It just seemed to come off a little bit slower than some of her other shots we've seen this year. Yeah, I mean, I thought she was gonna struggle to, uh, to get it on target, but uh, as it was coming across for a second, I did think it might've sneaked in, but positive for the Boilermakers. Zoe Allen now leading the attack. Inside to Dunaway. Dunaway back out. Nicole Kevazia. Older sister of Victoria Kevazia. Playing up front. Sydney Duarte. Over to Victoria Kevazia. Cross inside. Great catch by Wagner. Both sides looking very threatening. Both sides are showing what you really would have wanted to see throughout the whole season. You know, it's just uh, where is this attacking presence being as the Boilermakers elect to continue to bring on more subs. So, again, going against uh, what they've done this season, rolling subs. Hannah LaPierre and Abigail Roy at the subs table. But on the field, Chloe Woodbeck trying to defend. Woodbeck gets the ball back. Strong pressure there by Catherine DeRosa. Yeah, it's nice this by Maryland. I like the pressure and uh, getting a few more players back, having a more three defenders, just allowing uh, a bit more attacking presence so they win it here. Uh, trips over Emily Matthews. No foul called. And Amanda Schaefer comes back. To Mia Isaac. Long ball inside. It's Ava Morales again, but too hard, too strong. And Purdue's going to get the ball. This up's coming on. Uh, coming on now. See if they can make as big of an impact as the last uh, few sets have. Two other strong midfielders for the Boilermakers, giving Gracie Dunaway, usually starting at forward, starting at midfield today, and City Duarte a breather. Allen working the sideline. Lauren Holleran, nice move to get it back and kicked out by Sabrina Blunt. It's a Holleran's a really good uh, ever since she's come on and really been a big spark to this uh, to this offense with those long balls and uh, you're very solid at that back white position. And dangerous kind of ball there. Oh my, Kaylee Kimball runs all the way out from her goal, but here comes Purdue on the attack. They found Abigail oh. Roy, but Roy falls down. There we go. I thought he was going to let that one go as well. He's finally, referee, they're finally calling, uh, calling a foul. Physicality getting too much, uh, even for his like, as you hear the fans chiming. It's just a great atmosphere today with the weather and the fans. It's, it's just a, uh, a beautiful last day of the season, or the regular season, I should say. Great vibes out here in West Lafayette. It's Chloe Woodbeck taking the kick. Uh, I was going to say, could turn out with the uh, Maryland fans as well. So it's nice to uh, nice to see that. 
Fantastic turnout indeed. See if Woodbeck decides the long ball. She does. Long ball inside. Lapierre is there, but headed away. So you want to do that? Just keep getting the ball in. You know, win a few corners and, and, and go from there. Exactly. Purdue is now winning the corners, which they did not do against Minnesota. This gets them in great attacking position. Got to put the players in the box and see what they can do with that. Emily Matthews taking the corner. Yeah, you know, the last few times the Boilermakers have, uh, last few games of shade, the Boilermakers have elected to go deep with their corners. Let's see what they do here. Here it comes. It looks like it was headed off by Sabrina Blunt. Grabbed by Wegner. Wegner getting a lot of action here. And she's doing a good job going out and catching some of these balls that are being sent her way, only letting up that one goal. Yeah, no, looking really solid with his Wagner. And, um, it just helps the defense so much, you know, when you know that your goalie's feeling confident and able to come in and dive on uh, a lot of those loose balls. It's it's so important, and that's something that the ball makers right now are struggling a little bit with, with Kimball just I think feeling a little bit shaky. But, you know, get to half time and you don't let up another goal, I think you can uh, talk things over and, um, you know, build, from, build a good base from that. Woodback finds Matthews. Matthews back to Kevazia. Sent inside and kicked away by Malike Days. That finds Malike Days again. She goes back to Turnage. Turnage. Back to Wagner. Full reset here for Maryland. What I was going to say, you know, I think if you looked at the possession stats when it comes to the you know different thirds, middle third hasn't actually seen that much action. It's been, you know. A lot of play has come in, uh, you know, the, uh, the either ends for, for both teams and the ball kind of just flying through the middle. Um, obviously going going along with the kind of long ball and counter-attacking play that both teams are, uh, are doing as Allen's just completely open on this right-hand side. Completely open, but Porch closes the distance. Strong pressure by them, but finds... Emily Matthews trips, falls, dives on the ground. In fact, there's Abigail Roy, not Emily Matthews. Excuse me. Up here. Hollering. Inside. Wagner running to go grab it before Kevizia could get a shot off. A shot off. And with just over seven minutes to go in the half, Maryland... It's a long ball by Wagner. I think it's past everyone. <laughs> if if I was want to make a coach, I think at half time the long balls are working and Holleran's really able to get a good distribution into the box and you've seen that since she's come on. Maryland's defense playing very physical and you'd almost imagine, you know, the coaching staff of Purdue being like, Well, okay, let's put some long balls in there, let them get physical and, you know, maybe try and go down a bit more because, you know, it's it's a great way to play defensively, but it can get dangerous if someone does go down the box, if you grab them too much or whatever. So it's going to be interesting to see if the Boilermakers, who so far have returned the physicality and stayed standing up, decide to start going down a, a bit more. Coming down the right sideline, Holland to her right, decides to go. Allen, who's also to her right. Allen pivots, spins around. Allen driving inside. Lots of Maryland, lots of red in the box. Good defense by Maryland. Purdue can't really find a player inside, so the long ball is sent over to Abigail Roy. Headed out, though. Yeah, to be honest, the best I've seen Allen play this season. Really solid footwork, looking really good, and especially on one-on-ones and, and when she's isolated. So let's see if they can get a through ball to her or if she can get a through ball to a teammate in the middle. Yeah, Allen... Charging at Wagner now, trying to force her to pick up the ball. Yep, she does. We'll see if Wagner tries to do a long ball again. The last one, as we saw, just went over everyone's head. As it looks like the referee is opting. Yeah, interesting call there because I, I don't really know. Yeah, I, I, I didn't see the call. I've, I have never actually seen that happen yeah. where the goalies wanted to change something on their kit. I think the chimp had to come out and the, the ref uh, 
ref was happy to, to blow that. So interesting. That's a uh, first for me to ever actually see what happens in that situation. Good pressure here by the Boilermakers. It is. Oh! Malik A. Days grabs Kevazia, and Kevazia goes down. And that's why I said. That's going to be a yellow on Malik A. Days. Yeah, just as I said, it was it was kind of getting to that point where, you know, they're getting physical, but the Boilermakers were fighting through it. They elect to go down there and in a really dangerous attacking position when we see our first card of the game as well. I think that's a smart move, you know? You've got to uh, you've got to find ways to, if you can't out, you know, I don't really know what the correct word is, but if you can't get more physical than who you're playing against, you, you're going to have to find different ways of, of, uh, of winning fouls and uh, and winning free kicks and, and finding ways to, to get around it. It looks like this free kick was maybe a foot away from the box. So Emily Matthews, good opportunity there. It looks like Lapierre is inside. She's not marked by anyone just yet. And that's an interesting thing as well. Imagine that that was a foot. Uh, later on with the ref given a penalty, you know, it's it's amazing how that, that changes depending on where it happens on the pitch. Matthews, the shot. Oh! It's not in. Looked like it could have been, but it is not. That was close. It doinked off the top of the crossbar. We don't have VAR, so it's... Oh, I think it just bounced back. I don't think it crossed the line. Oh, my gosh. That was insane. Wow, I thought it, I've not seen that happen this season. What a, what a play right there. Well, that's one of the tough things though. If it had bounced on the line and you know, there's no way of, of, of telling it's all up to the ref. Had flashbacks to the 2010 World Cup there, England, Germany, we had a similar situation and the ball did cross the line. Yeah, yeah it's definitely it just like bounced. It definitely just bounced back. But it bounced uh, back. It's kind of deceiving because you see the net moving, so you think it might have hit the top of the net. But then, if it hits the top of the net, it's going to bounce into the back of the net. So what a shot! Just Wigan was going to struggle to save that if that had been a bit lower. That was an absolute bullet. But um, yeah, hell of a shot there by the Boilermakers. Heck of a shot indeed. As Brooke Harala subs in for the Boilermakers, subbing in for Naomi Splatorf. Down here at the bottom of our screen, Harala. <laughs> there she is, getting the ball. Another one of these young freshman players, Harala, freshman out of Framingham, Massachusetts. Played in only seven games a season with 19 minutes a game. So not cr a crazy amount of playing time, but getting an opportunity right here to show her skill set as Purdue looks to build in the offseason. Well, this is the first time in probably 20 minutes we've actually seen Maryland get this many players down into that last third of Purdue. So let's see if they can make something happen here in the closing three or so minutes. Going down long ball to Mia Isaac over her head, and Purdue's going to get the ball. It's Woodbeck again. We've seen a lot of Chloe Woodbeck today. Her and Holleran, when they came on, have made a huge impact on that left and right back uh, positions. And, you know, they've really changed the dynamic of this game. So uh, a great call there. Oh, my gosh. Ball inside again. Boiler's got to get players in the box to help defend. Kicked out by Kevzia. Looks like a little confusion with Allen and Victoria Kevzia. As both players had the ball, but Allen finds it right now. Long ball ahead to Abigail Roy. She doesn't get it. Brooke Harala making a run, tries to get it. Well picked up there. And, you know, I've, something I was going to mention is this formation the Maryland are running right now on their tactics of getting more people in. I think that's what we're going to see once this second half does start. So it's like Ref's going to bring out another card. I don't think he was going to do that. I think it was just because of a bit of back chat changed his mind there so we've seen two cards now for Maryland yeah, another yellow card on Maryland it's with rolling subs obviously it plays a lot less of a situation you know if it was the kind of one sub and done rule then you know you'd be a bit more concerned but um, still though you don't only get a red card and uh, at any point they have already had one this season Purdue haven't had any Emily Matthews taking this free kick. Let's see if she can find someone for another assist. She leads the Boymakers with assist, but... Calls for handball. I thought the same thing there. The ref's going to let it go. So it'll be up to Woodbeck. 
Cross inside to Abigail Roy, headed out by Schaefer. Victoria Cavazia grabs. Get physical oh out there. <laughs> yes. Looks like she was almost trying to tackle that Terrapin. I didn't see which uh, number it was, but <laughs> Victoria Cavazia almost giving her a bear hug as she uh, jumped on top of her back, looked like. Yeah, really, really <laughs> physical. A very physical game. But I, joined, I do enjoy the physicality of this game. It just shows that these teams truly do care. There's so much grit and toughness between both teams, and both want to win really bad as Brooke Harala has a run as she is matched up with Turnage. Turnage, great, good defense there. And now Maryland on the counterattack. Finds Porch, but Blunt kicks it away. Well, I think, you know, what the physicality shows and the way that these two teams are playing, like you said, it first shows they care, but also shows so many positives that they can take into the offseason. You know, both have had a season that they really wouldn't have expected or, or wanted to happen. Um, and I think a lot of positives can be taken away from this. Abigail Roy has a shot inside. Can she hit it with the left foot? No, she cannot. Turnage, another great defensive play by the freshman. Yeah, late corner here. Might be the last attacking chance for the Boilermakers. You think they'll put everyone they can into the box, keeping just tolerant and we're back, back. Final minute of the half, just over 45 seconds. This is a great opportunity, go into the half with some momentum, tie up the ball game. Here comes the cross over everyone's head. Knocked away, 30 seconds on the clock. Zoe Allen keeps it inbounds. Allen working to her right, gets past one Terrapin. Zoe Allen just coughs it up, but Blunt is there. But it looks like Maryland still has 20 seconds, though. Got a long ball out of there. Get it away from Purdue. And as that one goes off Woodbeck, it looks like the half is about to end. Yeah, Allen just needed to get that last pass off. It was great solo play. Just needed a pass just at the end. But positives from both sides here at the end of uh, play. And just like that, the Maryland Terrapins are going into half up to one over the Purdue Boilermakers. Screen the Boilermakers right to left and with the wind behind them. Let's see if that makes any difference in this half. I didn't think that the wind made too much a difference in the first half. We saw that one wonky uh, kick, but it looked like probably a whiff. I think, to be honest, but the only thing the wind does is just be an inconvenience, but you know, it's. Um, that, that's a great way to put it. JJ, I love the way you put that in. Inconvenience. It doesn't add anything, but just, just makes things harder. That's a very big word for me, so I'm proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Inconvenience? That's not too big of a word yeah. now, is it? Yeah, well, maybe not for some, but, you know. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how physical this game um, continues to be. It's uh, It was such a notable factor in that first half, and, you know, the ref... Uh, Near the end, started calling more fouls. Um, you know, at one point he was letting really anything kind of go. So we'll see what kind of a dynamic he he brings to this in the uh, in the second half. Yeah, we'll see how physical he lets these players play. As we saw a very physical, competitive first half. A few fouls, few yellow cards on Maryland, but Woodbeck finding Emily Matthews in the middle of the field as the Purdue Boilermakers start their attack. Over to Victoria Kevazia. She's, or not Victoria Kevazia, that is Gracie Dunaway, excuse me. Abigail Roy making the run. Can she hit it with the right foot? She does. Great save. Nice job by Emery Wagner. Yeah, great attack down that right hand side. But something I was going to say that Maryland are doing well is, you know, they are getting bodies forward and it's um, uh, definitely the response that they needed. They just need to be careful if they do go forward. And, what kind of happens is when they are attacking, they go for three at the back as that kick slice slightly, the wind holding that one up a lot. So the wind did affect the game. There you go. <laughs> Maybe we do know what we're talking about. Referee calling a foul, they're giving it to Purdue. I actually thought it was gonna go the other way there, but Boilermaker's really solid position here early on. Another foul going Purdue's way. Maryland, two, t uh, two more fouls in Purdue, four to two in that category. You know, it's those first 15 minutes of a half are so critical for momentum. So let's see what they can do. Matthews on the free kick. Inside. And nice catch by Wagner. 
Yeah, we nearly saw a, uh, a beauty of a free kick in that first half. Oh my gosh, it was such a nice kick. Probably a few inches too high as it bounced off the crossbar. It looked like it actually went into the net, but it did not. Michaela Days right there fighting with Chloe Woodbeck. Ball out of bounds. Vi uh, and, and, uh, I'm getting the Kevazias mixed up. Nicole Kevazia. In fact, there's two sets of sisters on this Purdue roster. Nicole Kevazia and Victoria Kevazia, along with the Hunt sisters, Peyton Hunt and Sydney Hunt. I haven't seen Sydney Hunt come in yet today. Peyton Hunt started for the Boilermakers, but Victoria and Nicole both came in as subs, but starting the second half. I think it would have been interesting to see what you know, Purdue, if you know Tompkins was always going to come in, in the second half, or if that was just a, uh, if that was just something that was happening because things obviously didn't go to plan in that first half in terms of the goalie and uh, the goalie situation. Well, in terms of Kaylee Kimball being a goalie, right? She's a freshman, she's very young, and she did not start the season off as the starter. It was Sarah Kyle before uh, Kaylee Kimball eventually took over, and. While she lets up 2.24 goals per game, right? So not nearly as uh, as low as a, of a goals per game as you'd like, but she's actually been doing a good job get, getting saves, right? And a lot of that has been due to Purdue's back line letting up 18 shots a game from their opponents. So she's gotten a lot of opportunities to get a lot of saves and actually had her career high in saves on Thursday, not uh, on Thursday against Minnesota, she had 10 saves there, but then today nothing. And I think it was just a moment of, hey, let's switch it up, find something else to do for head coach Drew Roth because clearly something wasn't working. 100. You know what's been interesting to note though? I know we sort of joking about the win, but when the last three kicks out of her hand have all been sliced to the right and not made it anywhere at all, so. Interesting to see what's kind of going on there. If it is the wind, or if she's just struggling to uh, to get settled in this this second half. Yeah, maybe no more. Maybe that'll affect the long balls from Maryland. They can't really play long balls, and maybe that'll let Tompkins kick a lot of long balls on Purdue's side as she'll get an extra boost from the wind as Budish trying to break down Malike Days. Yeah, good pressure here from the Boilermakers, able to uh, just settle down and. Maryland switching up their game plan, going for the long ball now as they come down this right-hand side. Michaela Days, Malik A's sister on the attack versus Kevizia, left foot shot, it is picked up by Must Tompkins. Tompkins saves it. I, there was another must have been deflected, it was deflected. That, that yeah. must have been deflected because that did not come off her foot nearly as hard as I thought it would. No, 100%, I, uh, what a dangerous position there, just as I said, the baller is looking good. They now need to watch that they don't attack too many people forward. Uh, Michaela, D Michaela and Malike Day's sister on Maryland. They've played all six years there, as this being their sixth year. They have a combined 12,000 12, minute, 12,000 combined minutes in the six years they've played. 12,000 combined minutes. That is a lot of soccer that those two sisters have played. But here she is again. Working on Woodbeck, Michaela Days. Double team comes from Matthews, now Victoria Kevazia. Days with a shot over everyone. And Holleran is there to steal it. And now it's Dunaway, here comes the counterattack. Sydney Duarte in the mid midfield, Kayla Budish up front. And she has Victoria Kevazia streaking down the left side. There's the long ball to her. Victoria Kevazia has a long lane. A wide open lane, but she had to give up some ground to go get the ball. It's a strong pass from Dunaway. Cross inside, grabbed by Wagner, and the Purdue attack is basically end -to -end annihilated. Stuff. End to end stuff, though. This is the kind of, I was about to say football, this is the kind of soccer that you want to see. You know, you want it to be fluid, you want it to be open. I don't know if Dunway putting that ball in there was the greatest idea just because only having two people in the box, but, I'll, you know, it's, it's still good just to test early and. Uh, I think that's, a, uh, that's something they were looking at. Uh, you know, the last few attacks, there's been a lot of space down this left-hand side, so I think they'll definitely, uh, we'll see that long ball to the left again. We'll see it again. It looks like Dr head coach Drew Roth, Purdue's head coach, talking with the referee, probably didn't like something that he saw. Ends up uh, looking away as, look at this run by Gracie. Dunaway, but tripped up. Looks like referee 
will call a no, foul. It's just a goal, no goal kick. It was a good tackle goal there. Kick. Really good tackle. Fantastic tackle by Maryland. It was either Malike Days or Krista Waterman. Krista Waterman, another grad student in that back line. Just so much experience over the past few years. Krista Waterman, though, another. We, we, we mentioned it in the intro and in part of the first half. This Maryland team has a lot of experience, but also not a lot of chemistry because a lot of these players are transfers, and she's another one of them. She came, uh, Krista Waterman, she came from Farley Dickinson U. Yeah, you know, I, I and I think that's something that both teams can take into the offseason. There's been a lot of different, you know, um, rosters played and, and formations that I've mentioned last half. and. So I th I, there's a lot of positives that go into the offseason. And I think, you know, when you look at the Maryland coach, I mean, this being her first season, there is so much, um, you know, the, there is so much that can be worked on. And, and, and there's time. But they, they're young teams in the sense of how much they, like you said, play together. And speaking on head coach Megan Ryan Nemzer and this being her first season, that actually happened because last after last season, Former head coach Ray Leon's contract, it expired in 2021. So the program looked to hire a new head coach, and they looked at the former Rutgers assistant coach that had coached there for 14 years. Head coach Megan Ryan Nemzer coached there at her alma mater for 14 years and was a fantastic coach there as, ooh, a nice shot and a great save knocked away by Tompkins. That, that ball had a lot of pace on it, but Tompkins able to dive and knock it away. But as I was saying, head coach Ryan, Co Megan Ryan Nemzer, fantastic assistant coach, a part of that staff that led the Scarlet Knights to the Big Ten Championships where they lost to Michigan. And then they also went on a run that last year to the semifinals in the NCAA tournament where they lost to Florida State. Now, now disregard those losses because I guess the point I want to make is that her teams were good and those teams were competing for championships. So she brings that knowledge of how to win. She knows how to coach, and she's trying to bring that culture to Maryland as they start to rebuild. Knocked away, and now Purdue on the counterattack. Victoria Kevazia has Emily Matthews calling for the ball, but instead sends it to Duarte. Emily Matthews in the middle of the field. It's a two-on-one. Duarte, oh, bad cross inside. Tough look there for Purdue. That was a fantastic opportunity, but Malike Day is reading the, reading uh, reading that pass so well, getting in the passing lane. I know, you know, it was the reciprocal of the attack that we saw before, down way on that right-hand side, loads of space, any kind of aerial ball down that right-hand side would have found the Boilermaker. So, unfortunate not to come away with something there, but showing their counter-attacking ability and, uh, yeah, really solid attack there by the Boilermakers. Would you have liked Duarte to come down more on the sideline versus kind of break it in more and have uh, Matthews continue to stretch the field a little bit? I or think once she's kind of got halfway into the Maryland half, I think an aerial kick down that right-hand side. There's so much space down that right-hand side so for Dunway to run onto. So I think just that earlier, earlier pass. Great ball here, though. Here is Budish showing her speed. Budish going against Krista Waterman. Budish does not shoot. Budish slows down, changes pace, switches it up. Right hand tap back to uh, Abigail Roy. Abigail Roy, the shot, it's curving and it is not in. Ooh, nice that, that ball up. did have a nice curve on it. I thought that was going in. You heard my voice rising up. I was about to call it, but <laughs> nope, I got fooled. I think Budish fooled you as well. I, You know, to be honest, I thought Budish was going to take a shot there. I think it, it was almost the right decision. She last minute decided not to, and I actually wasn't a fan of the shot from outside the box there, but it was close, you know, but... At least for a second there, the Boilermakers did hold up play and, and, and calm themselves down. I think, you know, that's something they need to uh, to do if they're going to keep getting these counterattacks. Um, yeah, Maryland does a great job of getting back. Um, and look, you know, like you were talking about Nemza, the co head coach earlier, someone that played goalie for so many years is going to build a team from the back. Yes, head coach Ryan, uh, their head coach, Coach Nemza, actually played goalie and played goalie for Rutgers, right? The year she played, they're the best season they had. Mer uh, Rutgers went 16-3-4 with her in goal, pitching 16 shutouts throughout the season. She allowed pitching. a total. What's, what's what are we playing? Not, <laughs> not pitching. Excuse me. Mix, 
Mixing up my words, yeah. regardless. Well, it got sunny. You got sunny and you suddenly thought you were watching baseball. Again. <laughs> <laughs> you you know what I mean, JJ. Yeah. But <laughs> I don't know if I do. <laughs> six shutouts and let up a total of six goals on the season. Oh. Imagine letting up six. That is insane to think about. Only allowing six goals on the season. I honestly think she can actually hear you from where you're standing, so she's probably loving it. It's just like <laughs> getting hyped up by the guys in the box. Some you know? of the announcers hyping me up. <laughs> no, you know, I think um, I think in closing, what I'll say is the first season, anything can happen. Um, but the first season will always be a kind of trial phase, and you've got that six month period. I think when you when you get in, and that includes a bit of the season, and it really includes the off season. So it'll be important to see what Marilyn does and and how they can build and and how she can build as a yeah, as a head coach. So, uh, Victoria Kevzia calling for the ball, but Matthew's not looking her way. Down away, looking to start her own attack, but stolen by Ava Morales. She scored two goals in the first half. First goal grazed off the hands of Kaylee Kimball. That was an awkward play, but it was a nice shot by Morales, just Kimball not able to, to catch it. Morales working right here, kind of maneuvering through the Purdue midfield. Long ball up to Alina Stahl, but Purdue's going to end up with the ball in reset. Nicole Kevizia starting the attack, giving it over to Woodbeck, scanning the field. Doesn't really see anything, and it's kicked out of bounds. You know, I, I quite like how both teams are almost playing three at the back. Um, you know, it adds another dimension. Obviously, adds another attacker as well. Um, and then they kind of have a lone wing back, if you will. Like, you know, Woodbeck kind of is is going up, and Maryland are doing the same on their side. So that's how you're seeing more attacking presence, I think, with that extra person coming up. Forge with a nice header, but long ball down over to Blunt, over Alina Stahl's head. Woodbeck back over across the field. Abigail Roy not over to get it, but Ava Morales does. Yeah, first 15 minutes, we've seen two things, with the first being a lot more play in the middle of the field, um, and that's a lot, and also a lot more open of a game. And, and One team has got to take hold of it now, because this is where you can score, and this is where you can take charge of the game, and it's going to really be up to the Boilermakers, I think, now, before Maryland gets settled again in the second half, to get, to get a goal and, and get themselves back into this. You know, you, you can't see it on your screen right now, but the space on, out on these wings that Purdue are generating, if they can just get it out there and get some more long balls, it's only a matter of time before uh, a goal does come. Not the longest of long balls, but kind of short into the midfield. It was off the chest of Brooke Weston, but now Ball finds its way to Juliana Lynch. Lynch over to Porch. Porch cross inside, deflected off of Woodbeck, and Marilyn wins the corner. I'm surprised Lynch didn't just take a shot there. I really thought she was going to. I think she thought about it. With a new goalie in, why not? You know, you've got space, take a shot. Nothing's really come from uh, the set pieces so far in this early second half. So I think taking a shot there would have been a, uh, a good call. And with Emma Tompkins not being the tallest of goalies, all right, you can you can you can sneak that ball in on top of her reach, on top of her hands. We saw that in the 12 second goal that Illinois had against her. But Maryland getting the corner kick from Lynch. Right to Kevazia. Right. But it sneaks flick. inside. Oh my goodness, sneaked uh, inside again. That was knocked away by Woodbeck after it got past Tompkins. Emily Matthews trying to play it, but just kind of knocks it out of bounds. Two, that was extremely dangerous. Two amazing flicks there. I don't know if we're able to get a replay for you, but two beautiful flicks. It's amazing wow. goal line defense there by the Boilermakers. That could have got ugly really quick as the Boilermakers look to bring on substitutions in Lapeer. It was a fantastic oh, flick by, ter to, by uh, Tariah Turnage. Just a little rainbow over the head, almost went in. Did very close there. Well, it just shows the skill that uh, these Maryland forwards have. They just need to be able to get in the ball a bit more. Porch kind of can't can't control it with the header, and Woodbeck will go back. We're seeing Maryland 
getting a lot, play really well offensively. A lot of pressure on these Purdue backs. Purdue's got to switch this around if they want to come back and win. Obviously, they got to score first to tie back the game. Yeah, Purdue, I think, are caught in two minds out what they want to do, whether they want to go for these long balls or whether they want to build out the back. And, uh, they just got to choose one and, and go from there. And Purdue does have the win at their back, so if they do choose the long ball, it's going to travel. But Purdue choose, sending in their subs. Sidney Boudreaux, Boudreaux started the game off for the Boilermakers. And also Hanel Appear. Appear coming in for Duarte. And Boudreaux coming in for Abigail Roy. So far, substitution-wise, it's been great calls from the Boilermakers. Let's see if these set of subs can do the same thing. You know, I think it's it's a shame. There's been a lot of situations and a lot of games that I've commentated and watched where I, I almost wish that they'd had a few more rolling sub situations. And so it's nice to finally see it, but I, I almost wish it happened a little bit before. Trying to find Budish. But nice tackle there. That easily could have gone into a break for Maryland. Sure as it comes back to Nicole Cavazia. She also has Wood back. There's that space that you've been talking about. Lots of space for Wood back. Not too much pressure. His porch comes up trying to force it, but Lapierre, ooh, nice through ball over to Budish. Can she get there in time? Ooh, ooh. runs into the goalie. So that call's gonna go against Budish. I could have got ugly there, because Budish did come in with her studs up. I'm surprised the ref didn't actually pull a card there, because although they're both going for the ball, it was quite a dangerous play. Ooh. I'm glad that Wagner's all right there, because that really it was close to her face. No, there's the baseball reference. It was a little like baseball slide. That's what it kind of looked like. <laughs> <laughs> Do you miss it that much, Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, nothing like baseball season. But there's also nothing like Big Ten soccer season. Long ball out, not very long. Wind picks it up, slices back inside. Oh my goodness. Yeah, the wind's definitely, uh, it's definitely picked up because we didn't see it play this much of a factor in the first time. I think that ball literally like, like went backwards after it was up in the air. 100%, nice move there by Schaefer to control that, get it up. And here comes, here comes Lynch. Over to Stahl, Alina Stahl. Haven't seen too much for today, but Porch making a run back to Lynch. Stahl in the middle, looking for the ball, calling for it. There she is. With the shot over to, oh, oh, no. oh. Another ball bounces off the hands of a Purdue goalie, oh, and there's goal no. number three for Maryland. As soon as it set itself up, I, I thought she was gonna take a shot, but oh, what a shame there. What a shame, it, well, Savable. I mean, I don't really know. There's, there's not many other words I can, I can have for you there. It's a great shot. It's a powerful shot, but that's right at the goalie and should have been saved. Fantastic pace. Fantastic look for Alyssa Porch, and another unfortunate play for Purdue, as this is now the second ball that has bounced right off a boilermaker hand, a boilermaker goalie. Uh, it's you know it's look fair play to Maryland they've they've had their shots and they've been attacking well and they I do think they deserve another goal but that is just not uh, yeah it's it's uh, that's a tough one to watch yeah it's just as they say in in football if it hits your hand you got to catch it if you're a wide receiver and that hit her hand yeah a hundred percent I mean that just um, that's unfortunate and it's something that's plagued this team the whole season but fair play to Maryland they've they've Got a good uh, good hold on this game now, and the Boilermakers, they brought some subs in, Hollers back on, which is good to see, and let's see if the seniors can uh, can pull something out of the bag here. Hollow with that neon green stripe around uh, her, her left arm, one of the senior captains of this team. Holler actually transferred over from West Virginia, but so did Juliana Lynch and Alina Stahl. So all three players actually once played together when they were at West Virginia, but all three ending up transferring over into the Big Ten, Holler to Purdue, and Stahl and Lynch to Rutgers. Yeah. So it's, it's it's a cool thing to see, like former teammates, now rivals on one field. Yeah, exactly, you know. And, uh, I don't think there's any love lost. It's uh, It's been a physical, confrontational game, and 
let's see. I, I, you know, I think the Boilermakers can, can get back into it. I think they can at least get another one, but not if they don't start playing how they did last in the, yeah, the last 20 minutes of that first half. Zoe Allen looking to get it, but kicked out by Krista Waterman. The biggest concern for the Boilermakers now, I think what Maryland has got to do every time they attack is now just take a shot because if you are rounding a goalie that much and you know forcing that kind of errors then you might as well keep taking shots when you can and, and see what happens. Yeah, Purdue only with eight shots on the day. At, at a certain point you could just got to start shooting more but it's also been a factor of Purdue not getting the most opportunities at least in this half we've seen a lot of the action on the right side of the field. But now in an attacking position, Purdue has an opportunity. Seeing some substitutions coming in here. Venus is coming back on. Had a very solid first half. I believe DeRosa in the way. Very solid first half. The last uh, substitution coming on, but. Hallie Johnson also subbed back in for Maryland. It's going to be interesting to see what they can, uh, what they can bring. Maryland electing to go slightly more defensive, bringing some more midfield uh, midfield players. And it just like a, looks like a swarm back there right now, so it's clear that they are bringing people back and not necessarily parking the bus, but you know, less inclined to attack with numbers, I should say. Attack with numbers, but porch is also the one attacking by herself, looking for the through ball, but cannot find Sophie Vinas. Yeah, if the Boilermakers are in attack in these situations, they're going to have to get everybody up. There is no point keeping, uh, there's almost five defenders back right now. I'm not sure how they've gone from three to five and, and be another goal down. So they're going to have to get more of those defenders back up. It's the last game of the season. If you're going to lose, you're going to lose. And you might as well try and get a goal back and and attack. It can also be a bit of fatigue as Emily Matthews in the midfield. You got around so run around so much as a midfielder and Emily Matthews while she has fantastic cardio has played every minute of this game. No break for her and no break for the foreseeable future as the Broilermakers want to obviously pull this comeback and make it happen. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Long ball just kind of clears it across the other side of the field. Maryland will get the ball. Raya Turnage looking to throw it in. And she has Waterman to her right, but she also might come forward. Yep, she comes right forward to Catherine DeRosa. Ball back out of bounds, Purdue ball. Yep, Border Mike is bringing in Olivia Hall. And taking off Holleran, which is, I think, an interesting play because Holleran's distribution with the long ball has led to a lot of counter-attacks, so going to be interesting to see how Hall is able to continue that or change up the dynamic of the attack. Yeah, Halloran as a defender is still, like, she's a great offensive defender, if that makes sense. 100%. Well, I think she's definition of a true wing-back, but Purdue doesn't necessarily, I think, really play. You know, they, they kind of have, a, like, a lone wing-back that I was talking about, but they don't actually yep. play wing-backs in in an actual positional sense. So if they did, I think you know that would have been a perfect position. So they win the ball back here. Great move by Dunaway. Dunaway has Holler, chooses not to go to her. What a shot, but it's wide to the left. But you see how many players are in the box. One, two, three, four, five, six. Terrapins in the box and only two Boilermakers. 100%, 100%. If you keep saying 100%, I don't know why. Um, you know, if you're going to score, you need to get more people in the box. You know, they can't rely on getting lone shots and you know, hoping that they get some, you know, fluky bit of play that goes their way. They have to get more people in. I think Holland was actually nearly upset that she didn't um, didn't catch that. But yeah, nine shots now, and what was it only one on target? Nine, on sh nine shots, one on target. Split torf working against Hicks. The ball goes out of bounds. Now, of Purdue's nine shots, only four have been on goal. But you, you were saying earlier in the ha earlier in this second half that Purdue does need to put up shots, so or not put up shots, but uh, need to shoot put up shots. Yes, and they're and they're starting to do that now. 
However, it's tough though. Maryland are playing very well coach right now, and they're doing exactly what you do if you're 3-1 up. So it's it's tough. Um, it, it's not going to be easy as they win the ball back here, and this is a dangerous position. Dangerous position as that through ball is grabbed away by Purdue. Blunt finds Matthews. Dunaway trying to make another run. Lapier flick over to Holler, but a crowd of Terrapins are there. It's Waterman and Taraya Turnage. Yeah, I think the Boilermakers try and get the balls down the left and right hand side, fill the box, go for a few crosses, see how that goes. That doesn't work, then try going up the middle. But I think if the you know if the Terrapins are gonna have so many numbers back and really clog that middle section, then you know there's no point in trying to play up the middle. It's just not gonna get in you get anywhere. Just under 18 minutes to go. Two down, two goals. Abra Morales scoring two for Maryland, and another one we saw this half with Porch. Yeah, Morales going to be one in the uh, one in the hat trick, you think? Some more substitutions come in, so let's see what the Boilermakers do. Budish is going to come back on. Hopefully, that will electrify the midfield, and the Terrapins also bringing substitutions in. Love to see that sub of bringing Budish back in. Give her a break and let her play. Let her play out the rest of this game. We are. We know how much energy she brings to this team and her aggressive, creative nature to this offense. Yeah. If I'm Purdue, she's the way that we get back in this game. I mean, heck, she scored the first goal of the game for the Boilers, anyways, right? Yeah, 100. percent I also like the move bringing in Schaefer um, for the uh, for the Terrapins. I think just uh, you know bringing in a defender and an attacker, it's it's keeps it even, and uh, I don't think you know Maryland has any reason to go full defensive mode now. I think bringing players back is one thing, bringing on loads of defenders, there's, there's no need. So it's good to see the bring on striker as well. It's a great ball there. Great ball there, but another great snag by Wagner. She's been active today. Another great snag and catch. Yeah, I think it was days that, for that. Yeah, days came on. I was I was trying to find out who the forward actually was. It was, it was days that has, has come on. Yep. Kayla Days. Yeah. Kayla Days actually has two goals so far on the season, a final season of collegiate play. Two goals, two assists, and she's also started all 16 games this year. It's Allen has got great footwork. It's just that final decision whether to go herself or pass is what's going to make the difference between how great she can be. But there's Michaela Days working on Kevazia. Ooh, she had an opportunity to find DeRosa with a cross, but wasn't able to get there. Good defense by Kevazia. The ball went out of bounds. And so Maryland with the throw in. It's going to be Amanda Schaefer. Schaefer has Schaefer has DeRosa, but pops not to throw to her. Cross inside. Headed out by Woodbeck. Kind of dangerous. But now it's cleared out Man, by Lapierre. Great play there. Just get the ball up. Now the Boilermaker's got to get numbers up. British needs to hold great. it down this right-hand side. She's no real support in the middle. No support in the middle, but look at the effort by Victoria Cavazia sprinting down the bottom of your screen. I think that's something that head coach Drew Roff is going to love to see when he watches film over. Yeah, but, you know, you need the whole team doing that. One person doing it, you know, it's great. And, you know, fair play to Cavazia, but, you know, You've got to have the whole team rushing down. You've got 14 minutes left in the season. Don't keep anything in the tank. You know, a bit cringy, but just leave it all on the field. Go for it. A little nutmeg right there through Olivia Hall's legs. And Maryland on the attack again. It's a 1v1. Let's see if Purdue can catch up. Woodbeck's coming down the right sideline, but so is Porch. Michaela Days tripped up, and there is a foul. Yeah, that's a uh, no real need to foul there. I think there was enough Boilermakers back. If I'm Maryland here, there's one thing I'm doing. That's taking a shot, and let's see what happens. I wouldn't be surprised if this one does sneak in. Yeah, you can see uh, Michaela Day is kind of smiling right there, knowing, all right, we got we got ourselves in a good position if uh, we're Maryland. I guess I was speaking for Michaela Days right there, so I guess, yeah. <laughs> 
Anyways, looks like um, Maryland talking it over. Possibly see DeRosa kick the ball, but also have Sophie Venus up there. So it's going to be Venus. Or an open player. A wall of five Boilermakers stands in front of her. Puts up the shot. Oh, nice save. Great, Great save. save. Great save. Fantastic save. Looking for the top of that yeah. goal, or top uh, top of the net, but look at the reach. Yeah, that, that is a great save there. Great by save. By Tompkins. You know, uh, mm -hmm. it, was, it was right at her down the line, but, you know, it was a great shot. And that's a confidence booster that uh, she needed. Now the Boilermakers need a confidence booster themselves and, and start, uh, start going here. Corner comes in for Maryland. Ooh, that another dangerous that one. That was a... I, I didn't see if it was a flick or just an awkward bounce off of uh, bounce off the body, but I think it was. I think it just came off a uh, a terrapin there. Great corner, nearly ate my words and uh, watched <laughs> the goal go in there. But uh, the baller makers survive. Victoria Kevin's the uh, run down the left sideline, cross inside. Duarte's there, but so is uh, Gracie Dunaway. Gracie. Great ball, but where are the, where's the ball to make a support? Yeah. Where's the support? So many players in the oh, box for go. Maryland. 12 minutes to go. Victoria Cavazia gets the ball. Does not get the ball. Just kidding. Duarte, the shot deflected away. Like those situations, you need people outside the box. They can bring it back and reset. They got lucky, and they are going to get another attack. But, you know, it's those positions where they've got to, uh, they've got to hold the ball up a little bit more and, and just wait a second, then continue the attack. You know, you haven't got to get everything done in the uh, in that one play. Chloe Woodbeck going into the attack is the outside back of the bottom of her screen. There she is, cross inside. Oh, Budish is there, oh. oh, over the back of her head. She overplayed it. Budish totally open there, a beautiful ball from Woodbeck. Which is just not coming to avail, but what a huge position that would have been. Completely open, Budish just ran through it a little bit more. The sun, I think, is actually right from where that ball was coming from, so that's definitely played a factor. Very good point, actually. Like, now that I'm looking at it, that shadow is exactly where, or I guess the sun is, di is pointed directly at where that ball was coming from. So just lost in the lights, possibly, or lost in the sun. Well, you know Very what? plausible explanation. You know us English. We love talking about the weather, so it's... Uh... Under 11 minutes to go. Purdue down two. Oh, that's harsh. And I think of all the physicality we've seen, that one actually looked like a decent enough tackle, but Maryland won't complain, and uh, every attack takes one away from the Boilermakers, so as long as they can keep this up, I'm struggling to see the Boilermakers getting even a goal back in this one with the way the game's going currently. Malika Days with the free kick. Long ball to her sister. But it finds Porch and Woodbeck. Woodbeck tries to play the ball behind her, and Porch fights around her, trips up and is down. Woodbeck clears it out to Budish. And now it finds Duarte. Duarte, long ball to, to Gracie Dunaway, making the run. But not, smart play by right there by Wagner, bringing the ball back into the goal box just so she can pick it up. Yeah, nice play. There's been a few times where she's actually elected to not come forward, and it's allowed some of those long balls from Purdue to work out. So uh, that's a good, smart decision to come out of the box there and, and secure that ball. Wagner's a very uh, confident goalie. You see, like, how confident she is just going up and just catching balls that are not near her goal at all. Well, I think she's a very good, just a good goalie. Fantastic you know? goalie. As here is Michaela Days, finds Porsche. Great, great defensive play there by Duarte to break up the pass. Lynch, Days, but Lapierre taps to Duarte. Another tap outside, here's the Purdue attack. Olivia Hall leading the way. Dunaway to her left, there is Dunaway, yup. Victoria Cavazia to the left, Dunaway cutting inside. There's Victoria Cavazia, she has an open lane for a shot, she takes it. Wide left for Victoria Kevizia. I mean, it's it's a great bit of play by the Boilermakers. Maryland have done 
a really good job of closing those flanks out, forcing the Boilermakers to come into the middle. They nearly found some success there. Unfortunate that that shot's just sliced off uh, off the foot, but um, I think credit has to go to Maryland, who did a great job of um, of closing those flanks, forcing the Boilermakers to come inside. You see the frustration on her face. Throw her hands up like, man, open shot. And that's, that is also one that Purdue would have liked to have on goal. I mean, no one was in front of her. So if you're going to have that shot, beautiful open shot, at least make it be an accurate shot. It's tough, you know. It's always easier to go for that near side shot. The open, you know, the far side was obviously open. But, you know, it's uh, in those moments you want to go for what would technically be easier. And it's just unlucky that you got a bit caught up there. But, you know, positive. So seven minutes left. You get a goal back in the next two minutes. Who knows what happens in the last five? Exactly. You never, ever know until it's over. Exactly. Long ball. Over to Weston, who subbed in just a few minutes ago. Matthews tapped to Budish. Here's another possible opportunity. W Waterson is there. Great defense by Waterson. Waterman, excuse me. Positive stuff, though, from the Boilermakers here. Playing down the middle more, and it's working out well for them. Coming inside, looking for Dunaway. Dunaway also, that, that ball was a little bit too hot. Excuse me, high and far for Dunaway, but it looks like she also possibly lost it in the sun. Under seven now for the Boilermakers as Maryland is on top, three to one. Yeah, I, I, I think Dunway felt slightly hard done by the, how physical they're playing, but you know, Maryland's playing physical game. At this point, you've got to play it back, and you know, you know the ref's not going to call it, so you might as well just just get on with it and, and, and give it back to them. It's honestly been a really evenly called match for this game by the referees. Yeah, he's done it. He's done it. He's done six, a very good six job. Six fouls for Purdue, five for Maryland. Very evenly called game. Yeah, I think he's. Yeah, I think he's done a really good job. I think you know. Fantastic if, job. Like I said earlier on. Yeah, I, I think early on. If, yeah, some people might say, oh, it's been a bit too physical and, and, and this and that. But I think, you know, if you're going to call it that way, then call it that way the whole game, which like I said earlier on. And, and so they've done that, I believe. Exactly. And I, and I love how they've let these players be physical, be competitive. Obviously, don't let players be too dirty or like anything like that. But some good physical play. Let these players play. Let these players decide their destiny. And that's what they're doing. And Maryland is deciding their destiny up 3-1. to one. It's been something that's been spoken about this year specifically in collegiate level um you know in the professional leagues for the women and the men and and you know here and back in the united kingdom where refs have really spoken about right let's let more things go let's let it be a bit more physical and it you know it it just allows the game to you know to develop more and keep going because last two years especially in the premier league You've just seen so many calls all the time to the point where it's like, well, someone's going to go down for anything, and it just ruins the game. So I, I like the way it's going. Obviously, there's a limit. You don't want it to be dangerous, but you know, playing a physical, I don't think that's – it's not a bad thing. Exactly. I 100% agree with everything you just said. On the field, Venus has Kevazia and Matthews in front of her. Over both of them, long ball inside. Nope, tapped away, but shot is wide. Well, on, the by on the five minutes left in this season, uh, the Boilermakers are going to have to pull something out the bag here. They might as well send everyone forward and just see what happens. You've got gotta, nothing to lose. Got to play go. aggressive, got to play desperate. Now is the time that you empty the gas tank. There is quite literally nothing left to play for aside from your pride. 100%. How, are, how is this team going to go out? Are they going to go out attacking? Or are they just going to lie down and accept the fact that they lost? And if I'm head coach Drew Roth, I'm looking for the players who are fighting for their lives because they're also auditioning for playing time next year. Yeah, great point. Great point. And we mentioned we we mentioned we saw uh, Victoria Kevzia make that really strong run uh, down the sideline, but nobody came with her. That's a sign of a player that is going to put in a lot of effort and someone that can be a big key part that really wants to try hard as that is a through ball, but Duarte well, can't find Kevzia. Something you might have noticed on your screen is that they are going to make a goalie substitution. Smith coming in, the senior, I think, to play her last three minutes of, I believe, collegiate, uh, collegiate soccer. Madeline Smith coming in 
finishing off this game, Madeline Smith has an absolutely fantastic story about how she's gotten to this point. Madeline Smith was a four-time All-State selection at Millard South High School, right? But she ended up going to community college at Lake Tahoe for a year. She then found an opportunity with Omaha the following year, and she made six starts out of seven games she played in. Then she finally transferred to Maryland to play her junior season, where she's worked her way up to be one of the goalies on the team. And she's actually started 11 out of the 12 games that she's played in this year. And so let that be a lesson to all young players out there. You don't have to go straight into D1 soccer. You can work your way up. And she is a textbook example of that, coming all the way from community college to D1 soccer here in the Big Ten. 100%. I think you're, uh, that's a great point. And uh, we're going to get an early test here. Madeline Smith catches it. There she is. There you go. I, but, you know, yeah, you're so right. You know, if you really want something, stick with it. And, um, you know, you know, follow your dreams. It's not always going to be, there's not always one path, you know. And uh, you never know where you're going to end up a year from now. So, yeah, very fair play to us. Though. And I absolutely love the move from head coach Megan Ryan Nemzer to sub her in playing both her both her seniors that are most likely going to leave getting her or getting Smith some final playing game playing time in her final game what a fantastic gesture as the coach Maryland looking like they're going to uh, going to try and maybe get one more goal maybe three's not enough they want four the boilermakers are looking the feed in, it looks like that is what will happen on this final day for them at home. Just over two minutes to go. Maybe one more run. Kevizia, tap over to Matthew. She's got Duarte in front of her. Paul's down after tripping over Weston. Looking for a foul, slow to get up. Great move there by the pair. There's Victoria Kevizia raising her hand. The long ball towards her. Can she get there in time? Wow, look nice. at Mekalike Days. Nice move there from the pier. But as we come into uh, to the final two minutes of this game, a lot of positives that can be taken, I think, from both sides. And I think both teams will be a lot better next season. One thing for this Purdue roster is it it's eerily similar to the situation of last year's seniors. When that 2021 team, right, that team was 15-4-3, one of the best teams in Purdue's history, right? Let's go back to 2017 as some more subs come in for Maryland. Number 55, Olivia Hicks, and number 24, Alina Stahl, getting their final action of the season. But back in 2017, Purdue went... Purdue had a really good season. They went 10-7-2, and, and they made the Big Ten Tournament semifinals. However, in that, the next season, they didn't do so well. In fact, that 2018 team, they, didn't, they, just, just, they simply didn't play well. There was a bunch of young freshmen playing. But the freshmen playing in that 2018 season grew up to be the seniors in the 2021 season oh, as a, a strong oh, header from a cross. Woo, that was kind of dangerous. That was a great cross there. Very nice cross. Beautiful pass. But those seniors or for those freshmen in 2018 grew up to be the seniors in 2021 that helped lead one of the best teams in program history. So it can be eerily similar here. Last year, fantastic season. This year, decline with a lot of freshman starters. So this Purdue team, they have a lot of upside. And we, I, I cannot wait in three, four years to look back and see the parallels. See this team right here, the, this class of freshmen, when they're seniors and see what they're able to accomplish and see if they're able to follow the footsteps of last year's senior class. Yeah, tough to follow that up. I think you've nailed all the points that, you know, it's um, it's been a you know up and down season. I think that's something we've spoken about a lot, but lots of positives to take. And Maryland will take this victory and head home and close out the season on a high. The Boilermakers, well, they showed a lot of positives, I think. And something, you know, they can take into the off season is a solid base.